you know that you are looking at a person that will stand up and fight for parents, for students, for teachers, our education advocate. Come on, let's give Helen a hand. Our city believes in our public institutions and is saying loud and clear that we reject that agenda of privatization, of closing our schools, attacking our teachers, throwing our kids out onto the streets, an agenda to be driven by multi-billionaires who live outside of the city. This is a city they'll never live in, and they're going to hurt children that they'll never know. But this community is the one that's standing up. People want to know that this is a city that will prioritize its public institutions, public schools in particular, and absolutely uplift our young people. And that message of positivity is what's overwhelming, and what they're rejecting is this incredibly negative narrative that's been foisted upon Philadelphia and a whole host of cities all across the country. People understand that our public institutions matter, and that no public institution matters more than our schools, and especially the educators who are in them. And we're going to let Helen, as a city councilwoman who will walk the walk for schools, for kids, for all of us every single day in those halls of power. There hasn't been a fight that we've been in that Helen hasn't been in the fight with us. That's right. With Helen Gillen, someone who's not a political insider, but who was a parent advocate, she will be a strong voice for children, families, teachers, public schools in Philadelphia. And she's the person to drive this message home that schools matter, students matter, teachers matter. Helen is going to be the best council member we have ever, ever. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I am so, so happy to be here with you all today in community to talk about the amazing things that we're doing together. I really want to thank Randy. I want to thank uh, AFT and the executive team. I want to thank um, all of you who are here to talk about what it means to fight for education justice in these times and how when we can come together, not only can we, but we must win together. Um, so my name's Helen Gim, thank you. I am a former teacher, the mother of three children in the Philadelphia Public Schools. I'm a 20-year community organizer and I'm a passionate believer that educators, parents, and communities can form the backbone of a political movement to change not just the classroom, but also the nation, a, a nation in the throes of a deep moral transformation. Together, last May, in partnership with Randy, the AFT, our wonderful Philadelphia Federation of Teachers, and our fantastic president, Jerry Jordan, and his team, as well as a host of justice communities across the city, we won one of five seats within the majority Democratic Party for City Council at large, and we are proud to do it. Now, I'm not your typical political candidate. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, the daughter of immigrants. And my parents didn't have a lot of books in English at home, so I read at my public library. My parents weren't exposing me to an enormously diverse community, but I got that when I went to my rec centers and my public parks. And of course, I went to a great public school, so that even when my parents couldn't achieve everything that they had, I was able to do so and they made sure that that was possible. Those public spaces formed me, and I know they formed many of you in the audience today as well. They unlocked the possibilities of the world and taught me that no matter what individual circumstances we may come from, when we invest in our public spaces, we fulfill the promise of this society. That's the social contract. And it influences how I think about the possibilities and not just the limitations of government. But I am not that naive to know that for far too many, our ideals don't match our reality. And so for more than two decades, my work has been focused within community-based organizing. I came to that through my teaching, in part 
not only because I knew that no matter how much I did in the classroom, it wasn't enough to offset what was happening in my children's lives at home and in their neighborhoods. But it also meant something to have a teacher and an educator who stood with families and their parents, who stood with children, who talked to them about what happened when the utilities got shut off, who stood up with them when the police came knocking at their door, or when immigration authorities came to take away the people that they loved. It mattered to have them know that their educators were standing with them. My roots are deep within Philadelphia's Asian American and immigrant communities. That's where I started. Coming out of communities that have had to fight tooth and nail for our own existence. A Chinatown that's lost half of its land and a third of its housing to development that it was in the name of economic progress. An immigrant community which has fought for and continues to fight for basic human and civil rights. Even amidst unprecedented de de deportation attempts that have continued to rip families apart and pushing back against racist criminal justice, housing, educational, and economic policies that whether intentional or not, still have had the impact to perpetuate violence and dehumanization of whole classes of people in our society. And because I come out of that struggle, I believe more than anything else in self-determination, visibility, and voice for communities long marginalized and silenced. Because for our communities, we are only, we are only going to get what we are organized to take. And nowhere does that ring more true than in, our, in the fight around Philadelphia's public schools. The term education reform, we all know, is not neutral. In Philadelphia, we've had 15 years of a failed state takeover that has laid waste to Philadelphia's public schools and by extension, also our neighborhoods and our communities. We've seen public land turned over to private enterprise, labor rights undermined, state takeovers and emergency managers up any democratic governance of our institutions, schools closed down and communities laid bare in their wake. The moment when I really began thinking about running for political office was when we closed down 24 public schools in Philadelphia in 2013. Those schools overwhelmingly targeted low-income, black neighborhoods, ones that had already seen massive amounts of disinvestment and loss. Thousands of children went to schools no better than the ones that they had attended. We lost thousands of jobs. School buildings were turned over for profit or they lay fallow in neighborhoods, and many of them still lay empty. And what we learned was that those closures were a wake-up call. If we walk away from our public institutions, flawed as they may be, we lose even the opportunity to transform them, and there is nothing, nothing in the private market that will come in and adequately replace what we have lost. But over... <laughs> over those years of struggle, extraordinary things also started to happen in our city. A friend of mine is fond of quoting the great Brazilian educator Paulo Freire, who said that conflict is a midwife of consciousness. And we came to consciousness very quickly in our city. Even as, or perhaps because we are witnessing such a massive dismantling of our schools, our communities began to am amass strength and power in the pushback. A huge partnership began to develop between labor and community, parents and clergy, students and retirees and all ages in between. And we moved the public towards collective action. Over the years, and especially in the worst of times, this coalition evolved. It grew and continued to work together, building trust and redefining our collaboration. We struggled and we've disagreed, but we've stuck with it. And most importantly, we've stuck with one another. We've partnered on institution building, whether it's building up an education newspaper or building up and working with parents who are reversing a narrative of shame and failure around our schools and instead working to humanize the dialogue about how we talk about poverty, our children, and our cities. We formalized coalitions through a group called PCAPS, the Philly Coalition Advocating for Public Schools. And anchored by the PFT, PCAPS is an evolving partnership of groups who are active in the economic justice movement, immigrant justice movement, and criminal justice movement. And they're tying it all together with educators and staff in schools, reminding us that education is just one pillar of a deeply important moral and community-driven agenda for change. And we've had a partnership with AFT that is unlike any other. Randy was arrested with us when, we, when the State Takeover Board voted for the school closures and helped raise that struggle to, a national, to gain national attention. AFT has also sent some of their best staff and researchers to Philadelphia to support positive alternatives such as community schools or a study of the city's regressive tax policies. And my race for city council also embodied that evolution from pushback to vision. You know, when you 
run in a big city like Philadelphia, you get a real sense of how people are talking. And crisscrossing the city, I felt initially a palpable sense of frustration, um, anger, sadness about the disinvestment in our public institutions. I mean, for years, the corporate ed reform movement has sold us this narrative of failure about our public schools, peddling in the shame and rejection of our public institutions. And that narrative, though, over these years, has really soured in these communities, where in the name of ed reform, basically services are just stripped away, schools are shut down, and communities are left bereft in, in, the, in the meantime. But what was amazing also was that the alternative message, to make our public spaces places of transformation and possibility, was deeply compelling and moving to so many people. People really understood that this was not about the failure of our public spaces, rather than the fact that we're competing with rapaciously greedy and moneyed lobbies in competition, that this was an issue that is bigger than schools, that we can't uplift our neighborhoods or our cities without uplifting our children through our schools and through those who teach them. And as we headed into the final weeks of the race, I could feel a real change. Everywhere we went, voters weren't just listening, they were cheering. They were cheering a message of possibility and hope, and if there was renewed and investment and faith in our public institutions, they were cheering. They cheered educators and teachers in classrooms. And cheering them right back were those same educators, members of our PFT, who dedicated weekends and after hours, spare time canvassing the communities that they served, engaging citizens, and helping every voter remember that this was a vote for the future of our children and of our city. This is work that was built up over years, and the thing I loved most about it was that we weren't interested in political power at the outset. We were always interested in building our base first. Political power was not the first thing that we sought. Instead, we wanted a base to highlight the voices of different communities across the city, diverse races, ethnicities, and backgrounds. But there was no shortcut here. There was no amazing superstar who burst onto the scene. And all of us are really just extraordinarily ordinary people who've learned to work together and build a movement over time. And the victory in Philadelphia this spring was pretty resounding. In the municipal elections, we withstood more than $7 million from a trio of billionaires who swept into the city to destroy public education in a city they will never live in and hurt children they will never know. And we sent them and their money packing. We won a non-binding resolution to abolish our state takeover body and reestablish local control of our schools. We put into office a mayor who embraced a strong pro-public education agenda. And most of all, probably most humbling of all, you took me, a daughter of immigrants, a first-time female candidate, an outsider by all stretch of the imagination whose race upended long-standing mythologies about incumbency, ballot position, uh, identity politics, and we ran an extraordinary campaign filled with heart, passion, and on issues that drove people to the polls. And together, that's what it means to win. I'm so inspired by the theme of, a of Teach 2015, Your Voice Matters. And in part, it's because when we look around this country, when we think about the strike led by fast food workers demanding a living wage, by immigrant communities demanding an end to unjust deportation practices, young people demanding changes in our criminal justice system and the treatment by our courts and our law enforcement, or if we look at our communities and educators and teachers redefining what it means to have education justice, true education justice in these times, all these things are moving at the municipal and local level, not at the federal level. These things are within our grasp and our control. And so when communities come together in trust and partnership, forged over years of struggle, together we can, in the words of Arundhati Roy, lay siege to empire. For us in education, this has been an empire that has falsely positioned private interests ahead of public interest. An empire that has shamelessly peddled in the narratives of failure and fear to market the idea that we as parents had to function as consumers in search of services rather than as citizens deserving of our rights. We laid siege to that empire, and in the words of Arundhati Roy, we shamed it. We mocked it with our stubbornness, our joy, our brilliance, our sheer relentlessness, and our ability to tell our own stories, stories that are so much different from the ones we're being brainwashed to believe. 
and against the backdrop of cruelty and deprivation in a time when Philadelphia schools have seen some of the worst things happen to it. Together, we now rewrite our history towards courage and compassion and dignity and hope. So the times are calling all of us together today. And a friend of mine has said that if you, you haven't been in trouble for a while, now is the time. Now is definitely the time. So I want to thank Brandy, I want to thank AFT, I want to thank my beloved partners at the PFT and to all of you in this room today for knowing what kind of trouble to make at the right time for the right reasons and with the right people. Thank you very much.